Before we look at the exam question, we're going to see how to calculate the coefficient of restitution between a ball and a surface by dropping the ball onto the surface. The ball is dropped at a height h1 to the surface, so its initial velocity is zero. We assume that after the ball has struck the surface, it rises up a height h2. So we're going to see how we can use these two heights to calculate e. Now we know that e comes into this formula here. The velocity immediately after impact is proportional to the velocity immediately before the impact. And the constant of proportionality is minus e. So we're going to work with the speeds. So we need to get the ratio of the speed immediately after impact to the speed just before impact. So let's start by getting the speed just before impact. Now we neglect air resistance and we know that for any object dropped near, near the surface of the earth the acceleration is constant and vertically downwards. So we're dealing with linear motion with constant or uniform acceleration. So here is one of the formulas for that situation and uh, we're interested in the speed at the end of the journey. That speed is v in this formula. Well it's actually it's it's u you know when we're using this formula here so we'd want to mix up u and v. Um, so anyway the initial speed is zero. Take the downwards direction as positive so the acceleration is g 9.81. S is the distance well that's h1. Okay, so that's the speed just before impact. Well, that's the speed squared, so the speed just before impact is root 2 g h1. Now, the speed immediately after impact is less than the speed immediately before impact, okay, because e is a number that's less than 1. Um, so that's what we call v. So we just multiply e by this thing, e times u. Now we have some more information about this speed. We know that this speed is such that when the ball reaches a height h2, um, the velocity is zero. So the final velocity, now I'm going to use the letter v here, it's not related to this v, the final velocity is zero. So now I'm talking about using the formula v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Because again, we're dealing with linear motion with constant acceleration. However, the acceleration now is vertically downwards. Whereas the initial velocity e root 2 g h1 is upwards. So I'll take the upwards direction as positive. for this final leg of the journey. So the initial speed u is upwards, it's positive. Well, we have to square it, so u is refers to this thing here. So if we square that, we get e squared times 2gh1, or 2gh1 e squared. Okay, so here's our u, not to be confused with this u. Um, um, the acceleration is downwards, so it's minus 9.81 or minus g. So we minus 2g and the height is h2. Okay, so here's the initial speed. The final speed is 0, so this is equal to 0 squared. Now we can solve this equation to find out what e is. So we see that e is the square root of the drop height, that's h. Um, it's actually the bounce height. h2 is the height that um, the ball bounces up to. And h1 is the drop height, the height through which the ball was dropped. So all we need to know is that ratio. The actual heights, the values of the heights doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the values are. It's this ratio, h2 over h1, that counts. A ball is dropped onto a table and it rises after impact to one quarter of the height of the fall. 
So the ball is dropped, strikes the table, rises up to about here. So again the value of h1 doesn't count. So we need the bounce height, which is a quarter of the uh, drop height, that's h2. So h2 is a quarter h1, and we divide by the drop height, which is h1. You can see that this is independent of the height through which the ball is dropped. And that's the square root of a quarter, which is a half. If sheets of paper are placed on the table, the coefficient of restitution decreases by a factor proportional to the thickness of the paper. I'll get back to the meaning of that sentence later. When the thickness of the paper is 2.5 centimeters, the ball rises only to only one ninth of the height of the fall. So let's say the initial height is h, big h, and it's dropped, it hits this thickness, uh, 2.5 centimeters of paper here, it's resting on the table, and it bounces up to one ninth of the drop height. So the actual height above the paper doesn't matter as we know. So let's get the coefficient of restitution in this case between the ball and 2.5 centimeters of paper. So the ball height is um, not one half but it's one ninth. square root of all of this here. So h cancels out so it doesn't matter what h is. We get the square root of one ninth which is a third. So the coefficient of restitution has decreased. That kind of makes sense because you know the ball only reaches one ninth of the original height whereas previously it reached one quarter of the original height. So in the second case the speed immediately after impact is um, less than in this situation here, less you know compared to the speed just before impact so the ball doesn't reach the same height and we know that E is the speed immediately after impact divided by the speed immediately before so obviously V has gone down in this second situation. U, U doesn't necessarily have to change if we make drop heights the same, U is the same but anyway Okay, in part 3 we want to get the thickness of paper required in order that the rebound will be 1 16th of the height of the, f of the fall. So x is the unknown thickness of paper in this situation. Okay, so h is, is the height, I can make the height anything actually, and uh, we want the rebound height to be 1 16th of the drop height. So first of all let's calculate e for this situation. So the rebound height is 1 16th h drop height is h, so we get the square root of 1 16th which is a quarter. Okay, now let's get back to the meaning of this sentence here. I'm going to let t stand for the thickness of the paper. So in this first situation there's no paper, so the thickness is zero. In this second situation the thickness is 2.5 centimeters. Now we are given that the coefficient of restitution decreases by a factor proportional to the thickness. Um, so let's consider the coefficient of restitution when t is 0, that's a half, and when t is 2.5 it's a third. So we want the factor that one half decreases by to get one third. So let's call that factor r, okay, the reduction factor if you like. So if we reduce or decrease a half by this factor r, we get a third. You see I'm trying to figure out the relationship between the situation when t is 0 and when t is 2.5 and then we can extrapolate that to you know, the relationship between the thicknesses when t, when t goes from 2.5 to this new thickness, which we have to find. So we have to be careful about the meaning of the words here, okay? Something decreases by a factor. That means that when we divide a half by this reduction factor, we get a third. So for example, if r was 4, well, we would be decreasing a half by a factor of 4. That would give us 1 8. 
and so on. So we have to find out what one third is, what R is in this case. Well, we just swap these around. So we have a half divided by a third or a half times three, that's three halves. Just multiply above and below by three. So the factor, the reduction factor, which I'm calling R, is proportional to the thickness of the paper, T. So, well, I'll write that the other way around, actually, for convenience. T, the thickness of the paper, is proportional to R. So if one quantity is proportional to another quantity, it means that one quantity is a constant multiple of the other quantity. So K is some constant that doesn't change when we consider different values of R and, and the corresponding thicknesses. So all we have to do now is look at the reduction factor when the thickness is 2.5. So the base thickness is 0. Um, so when the thickness is 2.5, the reduction factor is 3 halves. So this equation means that if I double the thickness, say I go from 2.5 to 5, k won't change, but the reduction factor would become 2 times 3 halves, which is 6 halves, or 3. So this would be another valid equation that I could use to solve for k. And you can see that we get k equals 3 fifths. I'm sorry, I mean we get k equals 5 thirds. So now we go over here and look at the situation when the thickness is x. What's the reduction factor from t equals naught to t equals x? Okay, if x was say 5, you know, twice 2.5, well then the reduction factor would be twice uh, 3 halves. The reduction factor would be 3, or would equal 3. Okay, because t is proportional to r. Right, um, so now we want the reduction factor for t equals x, so we want the reduction factor that takes us from one half to one quarter. So we decrease a half by the reduction factor r, and that must give us a quarter. And the thickness is proportional to this value of r. So, you know, you can see that R, R is a half divided by a quarter, multiply above and below by 4, we get R equals 2. So now we just use our formula. When the thickness is x, R is 2. Well, we found out what the constant k is, it's 5 thirds. So it's f our answer is 10 thirds, which is 3 and 1 third centimeters. Now a better way to approach this problem is to look for a formula giving t the thickness in terms of e rather than in terms of a reduction factor. That's not very helpful. Um, you know, we want to be able to predict what value of e we will get for a given thickness of paper. It's a much better, more useful formula. So we'll consider the general case. Okay, so the base case is that e is a half when t is naught. So let's consider the reduction factor when e goes from a value of a half to some arbitrary value e. Okay, so what's the reduction factor? You know, in the general situation. Okay, um, the thickness of the paper is zero here, and we have a new thickness here, which we can call just we can just call it t. So a half is reduced by some factor to give us e, and um, t goes from naught to some new general value t. So t is the general thickness when the coefficient of restitution is e. So what's the reduction factor here? So remember, we have to take a half divided by the reduction factor to get e. So swap the e and the r around, and we get r equals a half divided by e. Multiply above and below by 2, that's 1 over 2e. So in general, when e is a half and the thickness is 0, we find that r is 1 over 2e. So we are given that the thickness is proportional to the reduction factor.
So this is the thickness for a general E. T is proportional to R. But R is 1 over 2E. That's what we found for this initial situation when T is naught and E is a half. But if T is proportional to 1 over 2E, then T is equal to some constant. I can call it A or whatever. I'll call it A constant times this thing here. Okay? T is proportional to something and T equals a constant times it. So A times 1 over 2E. But you see, if A is a constant, A over 2 is also a constant, so I might as well refer to A over 2 as a constant. Um, let's call it C. So we get T equals C over E. Okay, so A over 2 is just C. So, the relationship between T and E is that T is inversely proportional to E. So, you know, if we say multiply E by 2, then we have the value of T. If we multiply E by 3, um, T decreases by a factor of 3. So we need to determine what C is. Well, we can use the fact that when T is 2.5, E is a third. So if T is 2.5, E is one third. So we can solve this for C. So at last, we have a formula connecting the thickness of the paper to the coefficient of restitution. T is 5 sixths divided by E. Well, multiply above and below by 6, so we get 5 over 6e. And we can use that form, this formula to answer the question. So this, in this final situation, e is a quarter and we have to find out what t is. So we just plug a quarter in for e. We get 5 divided by 3 halves, multiply above and below by 2 to get 10 over 3, which as we saw earlier. Okay, here is a rough sketch. A t equals a half. Uh, sorry, at e equals a half, the thickness is zero, so there's no paper. When e is a third, the thickness is 2.5. When e is a quarter, the thickness is 3 and a third. And you can see that as e gets approaches zero, the thickness is getting larger and larger. So, according to this model, as E approaches zero, the thickness is approaching infinity. When E is zero, it means that the particle doesn't bounce. Because remember, this is how the um, speed after impact is related to the speed just before impact. So if E is zero, we get the speed just after impact is zero. So that means the particle doesn't bounce.